This is Jason R. Levine, also known as Jace Fluency MC, and I want to know, can you hear me? Can I get a yes, a thumbs up? Slavka's here, Thomas is here. Hello, Fatima. Nevis is here, Gordana is here, you can hear me. How about see me, clearly, hear me, see me? Good. Now that that's out of the way, uh, I'm here to welcome our esteemed presenter, Dr. Nelly Deutsch, who I believe is with us. I think I just saw her name there, so I'm going to bring her in right away so we can both be up here and welcome you. Let me just find her amongst uh, the crowd here. Ooh, lots of people in here today, as I was hoping. Let's enable... Hello. Dr. Nellie D, to come on in. Hi. There she is. <laughs> we have uh, Dalel is here. Excellent. Shaki's here. Nevis, lots of potatoes. <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, Professor Tony's here from Turkey. Vanessa's here from Brazil. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. I don't know if you noticed uh, Dr. Nellie, but... um. I'm I'm trying to one up you here. I think I think I've got your your library beat today. You know, normally I have nothing. And look, overnight, transformational things happening here, library wise. Is that my room? <laughs> There's an echo. <laughs> uh, I just decided to set this up as a prop today, because I knew you had books behind you, so I, I wanted to. I wanted to show you what I got. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm on the road. Does anyone want to guess where I am? I think Dr. Nelly knows. In the cellar. I'm. I'll give you. A hint. No, I'll give you a hint. I'm with. I'm at a presenter's house. It's not Dr. Nelly's. That would be very cool. But I am. I'll, I'll let you think about that. In the meantime, what countries do we have here? Let's represent. Romania is in the house. Greece, Panama, that's three, Serbia, four, Bulgaria, five, Morocco, six, Brazil, seven, Argentina, eight, USA, nine, Peru, ten, Tunisia, eleven, oh, it's going too fast, Germany, Egypt, can't count anymore, Pakistan, wow, wonderful, wonderful, this is a rescheduled class, uh, we were not able to have it the last time because of some technical difficulties, Dr. Nelly has uh, graciously agreed to do it again, of course she would, and here she is. There was some really amazing action on the pre-class questions that Dr. Nelly posed to us. Uh, that was a few days ago, but then I posted it again, the new class, and there was a lot of action there again. I think she asked some really great questions. Uh, some of you have had the chance to look at the slides because uh, we put them up when we couldn't have the first session. Uh, Dr. Nelly, you've made a few changes, is that right? to the presentation and of course she hasn't given the presentation so you've had a nice little preview now it's time for the real deal dr nelly deutsch welcome sounds like a funny thing to do how can i welcome you to whiz iq you are whiz iq uh hello we love you thank you for being here take it away dr nelly deutsch everybody thank you thank you so much jace and everybody thank you for coming to this session and uh Actually, I don't even know what I have to uh, share with you uh, except myself because you guys have uh, have it all. I've been going through your uh, comments uh, to the pre-task and it's just amazing. I, I, I'm just learning, just like Jennifer said, there's more learning from the participants then we can actually give you. So, Jace, I think we can just uh, have you sing, and um, I got nothing to say. Jace, you got it? Like, everybody's just amazing. I mean, the things you wrote. For... <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Jace loves to talk. Oh, I, I wanted to come back and say hi again. No. no. Uh... So, Jace, what is the result? <laughs> I want to steal your thunder. Give me the spotlight. Yeah. Jace, uh, what's the result of the uh, of the it's poll? True. It's so loud. Is it me? Am I 
Am I too loud? Let me lower the volume. But can I just say? Oh, my volume was full. Oh, oh my. No, it's me. It's me. No, no, no. It's me. It's me. I had it full blast. Sorry. No. No, it's not you. It was me. Sorry. Somebody said I was too loud. I just saw that. No, we have results of a poll that Dr. Nelly is asking. Some people are still uh, uh, answering. So just one thing. It, it, it is almost seems like a cliche when you hear presenters like what say what Nelly said or I say like, oh, we're learning just as much as you. But you have to really put yourselves in our shoes for this type of course. It's a new opportunity for everyone. But as far as you know, sharing knowledge information, not the least of which uh, it's, it's, it's new for us. So we're constantly stopping and reflecting and like wow this is there's nothing that compares to this as far as our learning and what uh teachers are doing out there so you know it's 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 so reciprocated on a continuous basis uh speaking of sharing information we have two options for nelly's question what do you do more listen or talk Anyone want to guess? I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. One of them is getting a lot more votes than the other. <laughs> what do you, what do you think? <laughs> Let's talk. You want me to share the results, Dr. Nelly? Mm-hmm, please. Should we go ahead? Pretty please. Okay. okay, let's do that. Oh, you got it. So, um... You don't even need to pretty please with me. <laughs> The option is, uh, okay, it comes out for listening, listening, oh, people are still voting, but it's like 70% listening. Okay, so 60 have voted, mm. I think that's... Do you believe them? Well, let's talk, let's talk, let's, let's <laughs> talk, let's all talk. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you, Jason. All right, everybody, so let's... Uh, let's get started here all right so i just added something in the chat i hope you got it it's t t t t that's what i learned i mean i learned a lot of things but that's one of the things that really got me thinking do you have any idea what t t t is well it stands for something that one of the uh participants added in the uh pre task and yeah, you got it. So you've been reading each other's thing. Very, very good. That's right. I think it's Deleli. Is that Delel? Were you the one? Yes. And and I think that's really, really important. So yes, Jason, this is something that one of the participants had added. And it stands for exactly that. It's uh it's wonderful. It's teacher talking time, Jason. Teacher talking time. Now you really have to add that to one of your uh, chants or raps, okay? Uh, TTT, that's what it's all about. Teacher talking time. All right, so the question of course was, are you a good listener? Okay, and um, when we talk about listening, and this is about listening right now, so let me ask you, are you using the chat box the way I usually use it? Now, if you've been watching me for the past couple of uh, presentations, what did you notice about Nelly or integrating technology for active lifelong learning? You must have noticed something kind of uh, very, very protrusive about this presenter. Anything that comes to mind? Well, anything well i'll let you uh think about it as we go so if you're a good listener do you think of other things while someone is talking <laughs> speak your mind okay okay keep them coming uh do you doodle shuffle papers look elsewhere when somebody's talking do you silently argue with a speaker and oh, this is not what this is you know in your head but you're very polite and you don't do it out loud, of course. Do you select and choose what you like? Well, I like this, V for this, no, 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 no. V for this, no for this, yes for this, no for that. Keep coming with the yeses. Uh, do you find it boring? Oh, 
you know, like, oh my gosh, if I could just go to bed right now, right? Well, probably no, 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 but that's okay. Do you feel lifeless? Like, God, is this going to go on? Do you uh, interrupt? Do you complete sentences in your head? Like, okay, yeah, yeah. And you complete the sentence because you always know what's going to come. Uh, do you criticize? Silently, of course, because we're all very polite. Um, on their voice. On the way they look. Okay, Jason put the books in the back, right? We got to look good. Here, um, okay, let me add another pair of glasses, maybe. Is this better? Or a hat or, you know, something. So... Do you criticize silently their voice, the way they look, their way of talking? Yeah, right. And do you ask them to please, could you repeat when they ask you a question in the middle of the conversation? If you've given a lot of yeses and you think you're a good listener, you better think twice, all right? Because most of us think we're great listeners. And, and that was very obvious in the poll that 70%, well, actually it's even more, of the population think they're great listeners. Well, some of the suggestions are that you can show interest, but really show interest. In other words, become interested, and you've given a lot of these ideas. Actually, as I said, uh, most of what I'm going to be talking about um, you've already said, which is great, because that was the idea behind the pre-task. The idea was to get you thinking and for you to come up with whatever I'm going to be talking about. All right. So interest, empathy, focus on them. Can you focus on me? I can't focus on you. Um, okay, this is a problem online, of course. Keep silent. <laughs> Anybody silent out there? I wouldn't say you're silent because you're chatting away in the chat box, okay? Accept the speaker. Now, this isn't easy. When they're not good looking, they sound horrible. Uh, you know, we're looking at them. And remember that it's not about you. Whoever is talking has the floor. It's really about them. And that's what this lecture like presentation is about it's about me right it's about me and what I have to say even though what you have to say was great and I really liked it and I wish we could change places you know I would like all of you you know all I don't know how many Jason maybe a thousand two thousand of you to come up here and and talk about the wonderful responses that you gave and I'm looking at them in another computer here because they were amazing but this is about me right now and we got to remember that whoever is talking it's about them okay so um, not that I need it but we do need it we need to uh, have our say so are we going to try to duplicate other people? Am I going to try to be Jace as a teacher? Because we are talking about teachers and the classroom. Okay, what happens in the classroom? Am I going to be teaching the way Jace is, the way uh, Jane is teaching, the way John teaches, the way Bill or someone else? Well, Am I? No, because we're all very different. You'll be hearing a lot of presenters and all the MOOCs, and you might feel, well, I'd like to be him. I'd like to be her. Oh, if I can only duplicate myself and be someone else. And the answer is, why? You know, why would anyone want to be someone else? And that often happens <laughs> while we're listening to people. You know, we just look at them. We don't really hear what they're saying, but we just look at them, we admire them, and we think, if only I could be them. And for teachers, that is a no-no. you got to find yourself. 
Okay, and that's what I'm going and hopefully uh, what I was trying to do with the questions, the pre and uh, what you're going to be doing in the post class uh, tasks. And that is finding yourself. That's right, Jason. You've got to find yourself. Okay, and that's Jace the rapper. Now, the other day, I had a really, really difficult class, and I found myself rapping. I kind of put myself and I said, Okay, Nellie, you're Jace now. And I did. <laughs> and you know what? It wasn't so bad. So we're great at mimicking others, but that's not what it's about. Okay, it's not about mimicking anyone, it's being authentic. And the more authentic we are as teachers in the classroom, the easier our lives will be. And the easier, that's right, duet, the easier it'll be for us to connect with our students. And you all mentioned communication, the importance of listening is to connect. We connect when we listen, not when we speak we connect when we listen. You know what? You don't even have to speak. You can listen to the person, and I think someone also mentioned this, without their talking at all. You know, those silent moments when no one is saying anything? How do you feel when someone is silent? You ask your class a question, and they're silent. No one says a word. Complete silence in the class. What do you do? You feel embarrassed? You are frustrated? You feel angry? Look at all that. Sad. Shy. Oh my gosh. Why? Ah, oh, there, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Why? <laughs> Why would you feel silence, bored? Oh my gosh, inhibited. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So I would presume that most of us feel uncomfortable with silence. And yet they say silence is golden. Why do we feel uncomfortable? What's wrong with silence? Something is wrong. Oh, Maria loves silence. Hooray. Yes, that's the point. You see, when there's silence in a conversation um, in the family or uh, with your friend, how do you generally feel? When you're in a conversation with a friend, someone that uh, you're comfortable with and there is silence, how do you feel? Out of the classroom, do you feel good? Is it okay? Comfortable? It's okay. All right. It's okay. But in the classroom, oh my gosh. Okay, so there is a difference. Why? Why should there be a difference? Okay. Um, you don't like silence in the family. Well, I'll tell you about my daughter. My daughter was on her way to China. Okay, this was in... Victoria at the airport, and I was on my way to Toronto. And she was, I guess, a bit stressed about going all the way to China. Uh, this was like uh, at the Olympics, and um, and she said, and I kept talking because you know, I I I, I wanted to um, you know fill in the gaps. So she said to me, "Mom, could you please not talk so much?" And I said, "What?" I'm just trying to keep a conversation. She says, Mom, I love to be next to you without your talking so much. Okay, this is a true situation. 
And I learned a lot from that. I learned that silence for some people is very important. Think of our students, okay, uh, who are silent and we keep wanting them to say something when actually they're, they're very happy. All right, so maybe being silent is not such a bad thing. All right, so we have to mimic the real world and the real world has silent moments. And in the classroom, it's the same way. So that's about silence and the whole person. So who are our students? Who are our listeners? Who are they? Okay, they're not just people who, you know, give answers, are they? You know, how do you view your students? You know, we often forget that actually, you know, there's more to them than their role as students. Forget about us, that we, we're human too. But being human, you know, it's not just the physical, the outside of the person. It's the inside, the listener, okay? And they're listening and they're hearing themselves too. So think of all the conversation that is going on in the classroom. Okay, so um, as my internet connection is uh, putting itself back together, I guess nobody will hear me, but I'm still here and the recording will prove it. So um, I see people are writing that they don't like silence. What happened? Nelly is silent, which is true. Okay, so that's good. This is a good example of exactly what I'm talking about. And you'll be hearing this in the recording. So I'm still here. I'm in the background, I'm reading the chat box, and my system is trying to connect itself. And it will, eventually, uh, sooner or later, nothing is wrong. It's just a connection thing. Whoops. So we don't want to see that. Okay, so it says global age, absolutely true. I don't see anybody else uh, talking. Um, hopefully, uh, the connection will reconnect. In the meantime, I am going to try to refresh. That seems to work for Jason, and hopefully it'll work for me. And it is. All right, so here we are. Okay, and hopefully it'll be back. And things will come back to normal. Oh, Jace, I thought you were going to let them be quiet. Jace? Yeah, that was part of the show. Jace, they were supposed to have some silent moments. Are you kidding me? No, I'm... Do I ever kid? Well, sometimes, I guess. Jason was supposed to be a What do you think is important that no, we need to... No, you didn't. No. You disappeared, so I made some... I made some no, funny jokes. Very... You decided to get, <laughs> you decided to get super silent on us. No, no, no. I disappeared. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, you'll be able to get the. Um, well. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened. Um, you're going I, to I wasted your time. Recording. I wasted your valuable time while you were gone to to make to so, make jokes uh, as usual. You'll about how how you decided uh, to get YouTube. You decided to get super silent on us. See what happened.
but you left us with this there's a mystery for you yeah but the idea is so <laughs> yeah it didn't look like you were silent i got a lot of, yeah well did they have a bit of I, I, I tried i tried to, I tried to <laughs> no so i'm sorry i filled it up with a question i i, I took a question that Vanessa, not a question but Vanessa put up something i thought was very interesting and I think you would find very interesting, so I decided to ask it while you were gone. Okay, we'll as see. Ellie's are, got a lot of as we are in more and more, as we need more and more to communicate and listen. I I, I tried I tried to I tried to. Media. No, so I'm sorry. I filled it up with a question. I I, I took a question that Vanessa, not a question, but uh, Vanessa put up something I thought was very interesting. And I yeah. think you would find very interesting, Thank so you. I decided Thank to you. ask it while you so were gone, person, which is, as person, people are, um, as we are in more and more, itself, as we need more and more to and communicate and listen outside book, of Andrew just our families and stage, like you know, here. especially Andrew, through social like media, does it mean to be a good listener in social yeah. media? Andrew but that's all, that could be a whole really other class in into, of itself, uh, but uh, I thought that might be an interesting topic. Okay, back to you. Still here? Well, somebody <laughs> read his book, maybe. Uh, it's really, really important to um, allow silence uh, in conversations because you do listen to these spots, and they are very important because how we fill them in will help you understand yourself a lot better. And my example with my daughter and the chitter chat that I was going through, because I felt that she needed comfort. And I thought that I was comforting her by, you know, talking a lot. And it didn't do it. You know, it doesn't do it. So as a teacher, we are learners. At least I am. I learn a lot. And I think that most of us do. If you could just add in the chat box, give me a thumbs up, like a really big thumb. If you can make it really large here, uh, you know, there's a number there you can make it. Let's see if you can make a bigger one. I don't know if you can. Uh, are you a learner? Okay, that's great. So I can, <laughs> what, Jason, you're not? I noticed that. Um, you're just testing my vision, eh? Well, okay, so I see most of you would probably say that you are. You know, maybe even a few words, you would say you are. You know, it's it's pretty obvious that teachers um, are great learners. Okay, they're great learners. And the reason that they're great learners is because that's what they do. Okay, they, uh, they teach and they have to get information in order to pass it on to their students. The question is, would you let your learners, your students, teach okay give me a thumbs up if you would allow your students to take over take over yes 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 jason you're gonna have to put your thumbs down there yes yes all right so <laughs> so the answer is yes well it's the same idea okay do we learn when we teach or do we learn when we learn? Where is listening? Okay, do we learn when we listen or do we learn when we talk? And these were two of the indirect questions. Yes, yeah, some of you said both. You talked about talking and listening as a process of learning okay so most of you think that it's both anyone think that it's only listening that you only learn by listening okay back to silence okay something to think about all right so think about it as we go because you're going to be reflecting you're going to take a survey Find out what kind of listener you really are, and then you're going to reflect. Okay, that's part of your post-class uh, task. 
Okay, so we're just trying to get you thinking. Um, one of the things that uh, I find very, very important in my life and uh, in the lives of uh, the people that I come in contact with and my students, and by the way, I've been teaching uh, from the age of four. I've had four-year-olds to, uh, I think my oldest student was 89 years old. Okay, so emotions are really a big part of that. And I cannot not tap into my students' feelings. I constantly watch them and try to figure out where they are, how they feel. Do any of you do that as well in your classes? Do you listen to your students' feelings? Yeah, I said a double negative, Jason. I said, I cannot not. In other words, I can't help myself. There's something in me that wants to tap into students' feelings. And I don't, I don't even know if this is a good thing. Um, you know, it's just something that I feel that I, I have to be there. And uh, it keeps me occupied a lot. Okay, and as I look at their feelings, and I ask them, you know, I, I try to find out what they're feeling, I, I also reflect on my own. In other words, how am I feeling about how they're feeling? And they might have a bad day, it has nothing to do with me, but they, yeah, it's their body language, exactly. You walk into class and, and, and you know, you know, you kind of feel it, they had a bad day, something happened in the class before, and, and, and I, I think of myself too, okay? And this is where action research comes in. How many of you have uh, conducted action research? Have you tried action research? Action, re action research is a system where you learn about yourself and your teaching and you try to improve it. Oh, no, you haven't. All right. So um, you can look it up find out more about it it's really a wonderful way it takes a bit of time but i think it's worth it yes thank you for making that large thomas yeah action research so it's really learning about ourselves not only our our students but it's a very reflexive kind of process what i want my students uh to have during the time with me is to feel good how many of you uh, want your students to feel good about themselves? Okay, give me a thumbs up. You really want your students to feel good. Yeah, okay. Um, and I think that's where the idea of an entertainer comes up. You know, most of us um, resort to entertainment when we, you know, watch our kids. and Well, they don't look too happy, doesn't matter what age. And then we start being funny and we try to uh, entertain them, right? Um, so we want our students to feel good about our, themselves, okay? And that makes us feel good, of course. We want them to gain confidence, and um, that's where we come in and try to uh, work with them, okay? It's a two-way process. And let them realize that they're not alone, okay? We really care for our students, Okay, I think that's one of the um, key features of a teacher. It's someone that truly cares. I don't think anyone goes into a profession or stays in the profession unless they really, really care. All right, so yes, it, we want to give them a sense of belonging. We want to make them feel confident in their skins, in themselves. Um, and, and I don't know if they do this in other uh, content areas, but I know that language teachers are very, very strong in the nurturing area. They, they really feel uh, very, very caring towards their students. I'm not sure if the math teachers care more than about numbers. I'm not sure that they're there. It's really important to um, have a presence in class 
and help our students develop their presence. And all this is part of language learning. And this is where JACE comes in and where our ideas overlap with the three R's. How many of you have heard of the three R's? Just give me a thumbs up or just what are the three R's? Okay, what are the three R's? Let's see if you've mastered the three R's. What are they? Oh, Lopez doesn't know the three R's. Can someone add the three R's for those who don't know what they are? <laughs> three R's. Relax, repeat. Very good, Sharon. Relax, repeat, remember. Now, these are magical words. They really, really are. And you know what? Um, I've had these ideas, and I'm sure you have too. But the way Jace captures them is magical because relaxing is the way. And I did conduct an action research project on reading comprehension tests and on anxiety. There's a lot of anxiety in the classroom. And a lot of this anxiety comes as a result of maybe TTT, teacher talking time. <laughs> There's Vanessa, I love smileys. So relaxing is really important. And one of the ways that I have uh, practiced is mindfulness. And I do a lot of calming exercises, by the way. My students know how to sit properly. They know how to breathe and relax. I do a lot of <laughs> breathing, mindfulness, uh, meditative exercises in class. Sometimes when the class, just before the class begins, because they're too hyper or uh, they've had a bad day or they've had a test or they're going to have a test. So anybody else do this in their classes? Anyone else do uh, exercises, breathing, uh, any kind of no no never thought about it oh you do Dalel. that's great don't be afraid it could be part of listening comprehension in other words uh stand up put your hands up you know breathing kind of yoga there's a lot of yoga for um for teachers you know for regular classes you don't have to be a yoga teacher they don't need to sit down they can stand they can breathe, you know, you can brain gin. Exactly, Maria. Yeah, they're, and it's fun. It's fun because they enjoy yoga. I, I did some mindfulness on was IQ. Change chairs. You can get them to walk around the chairs, to raise their arms, to stretch, you know, to do all kinds of, you know, um, uh, relaxing before the class begins. And don't forget, this is listening. They, you know, you get them to at different levels to listen to you and perform. It really makes them feel good. Of course, you can do with music, right? But um, you want them to relax. And music could relax if, you know, uh, the kind engineers are already there relaxed. That's good. If they're relaxed, that's very good. Okay, but um, I use the Alexander technique. I don't know about your students, but my students uh, have back problems. Any of your students have back problems? High school kids um, are constantly complaining. They're lying over the table. I can't take it. I can't sit anymore. I mean, they go nuts about, you know, they just can't sit. So what I do, you can look it up on the internet. I give them Alexander Technique uh, exercise. They learn to sit, they learn to stand, they learn to walk, and they love it. Well, that's because my background is in yoga, Reiki, and Qigong. And um, the reason I'm giving you all this, because everything I've said so far, remember, is about me. Okay, I'm giving you my perspective because of my background. All right, so this has been part of my background. I will go further and to say sports. I have had kids run around the building. I have taken them on runs around campus. Yes, 
okay because i did a lot of long distance running so what i do is i bring all my you know um past skills into the classroom so i get them to do sports in class competitions and yeah i did half a marathon i'm still working towards a marathon but long distance running is also part of my uh... all right so let's get back to listening okay we're talking about listening and um yes it is thomas i i think a lot of you i know many of you um from chats and and uh, discussions and so on and i know that many of you are also involved in the whole person and uh, this is important to you so full attention how do you show full attention if you could just demonstrate now i can't see you but full attention one second of full attention the chat's moving you cannot be in full attention if you're adding to the chat okay um <laughs> no typing that's right tony you cannot be in full attention if you're chatting Okay, remember, we're talking about active listening. The whole person is involved in active listening. And the chat box is still going. Jace. All right, so we could stop the chat, but that's not the idea. The chatter is going to go in your head. You're going to be constantly chatting. Okay, whether it's in the chat box physically or, you know, in your head. So the idea is full attention no chatting all right so how is this done all right not easy well the first thing we do if we want to really listen to someone is let go let go of the keyboard okay let go and allow the person who's talking to talk don't do anything. Just watch. Are you watching? Don't say anything. It's pretty hard, isn't it? All right. Next. Give space. Give me space. You're taking my space. By writing in the chat, by, you know, chatting in our heads when someone is talking, we are not giving them space. So listening, fully listening, giving the other person your undivided, notice undivided attention, is letting go of yourself, watching the other person, giving them space. Okay. And letting them speak. That means no interruptions, of course, of any kind. And the fourth one. No, 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 it's a practice, Jace. It's active listening practice. It takes practice. You cannot I took force this anybody advice. to I took let this go, watch, disable give the chat. space, let them speak. Just, just you cannot force it. It comes with Neither practice. Okay? And this intention. Is a you have to really... All right, I'll enable, I'll enable. All right, so um, feel They're free so to use the chat box if you cannot give your undivided attention. Or you can try it and see what happens to you because that's what it's about. It's about learning about yourself through listening to someone else and letting go, watching them, giving them space that you want. We want space, but it's giving the other person space and letting them speak. 
The next one, as I said, the fourth one and the most, the fifth, sorry, and the most important and difficult one is suspend evaluation. How in the world can we not give someone a grade? We're teachers, right? But even people, we are constantly evaluating one another. We're giving them grades. We're giving, you know, we're giving everybody grades. Somebody says, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, brilliant. Uh, wow. You know, woo, wow. In other words, let's not do it. When someone's talking, try to suspend evaluating them. And here, think about your students. No reaction. I mean, like, not this is good, this is bad. Just, it is, you know, let's just listen to it and let it be okay this is really really hard and the last one is easy right ask to respond all right so which one you've got reddish purple well i don't know um what color that's brown and light i don't know and green which one is the easiest for you? If you could just write it down, which one is easiest? Letting, letting go, giving space, suspending evaluation, watching, letting them speak, ask to respond. Which one is easier for you? You like the pink one, eh? I like it too. It goes with your name, Neves. Purple, space, watching. Light blue, give space. Hmm. Okay. Pay attention. Uh, where does it say pay attention? I don't see pay attention. Pay attention is not one of the um, uh, not one of the things here. Okay. Pay attention. See now. Full attention is just uh, the whole thing. The whole thing is really full attention. So if you mean that you can do all of them at once, that's great. Here is not here. <laughs> Hopefully we can hear. All right. So these are um, the six okay key features of an active listener. And it's practice. It really does take practice. And there's a lot of value. Okay. We'll be discussing that in the uh, post task. There's a lot of value in it. Teachers, now I'm going to go in as a teacher. As teachers, uh, I've been using technology since, um, I guess, the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s. So it's been a long time. Um, and I use whatever I found on the internet for homework, for classwork, for you name it. And the question is, do I use American um, audio and video or do I use British? Okay, that's always been a question with foreign language learners. Canadian, of course. <laughs> of course, Steve. Of course, it's Canadian. But um, my students need to be exposed to everything, right? So uh, international English accents. Well, online, I found two really, really great uh, sites for audio. And this is for you if you're interested. I don't know if you're familiar with it. With manythings.org. Any of you familiar with manythings.org? By the way, the PowerPoint presentation um, in the courseware can be clicked on. It's clickable. You can click on the images and you'll get the sites. But familiar? Are you familiar with uh, many things org? It's an old website. It's got great uh, audio for American. Notice here, American stories, and you can use this with your students. Okay, if you're interested. Uh, there are tales, American stories. There's Edgar Allan Poe. And there are lots of exercises. So this is an excellent website. Click on it in the courseware. Just go into another one uh, that has both American and British. It's divided into American and British. 
And isn't this amazing? Uh, you have a lot of uh, listening from beginners up to advanced. Again, this is manythings.org. And it's all completely free. Okay, super free. It's always been free. It'll always be free. Now, this one is American. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's VOA News, also free. Okay, I stress the free because I really think the teachers, well, I can't afford to pay for anything, even if it's a little bit, because it all seems to, you know, pile up. So there's VOA News, uh, which is great. Okay, you've got audio, video, lessons, and practice. Your students will love it. It's all there. All right, so the pre-class task. Okay, these were some of the questions. Your responses were amazing. Um, and I hope that uh, you've learned from them. I know I have. But in addition, I'd like to share, we've got questions, so I'd like to share uh, these books. One is The Wisdom of Listening, which is this one. By the way, I teach listening at Atlantic University, listening and dialogue. Okay, there is the, uh, the Wisdom book. There is the Donahue Excellent books. Okay, um, I suggest you try to get them. There's the dialogue, amazing books. And here is the listening below the noise. And these are all very transformative. And notice the power of silence. <laughs> silence is a very important part of a conversation and listening. There's a lot of learning going on in listening. So that's it. Oh, there's one more thing I almost forgot. There's a little quiz. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Jace, you got to extend that. I just noticed that. Um, okay, are you ready? I didn't disappear again. It's just I'm losing connection for some reason. Uh, let me see what's going on. No sound again. I don't know why. Okay, let me try that.